So lovely to speak to you again, Kat. It's uh, great to catch up with you because I, I think you were on Practice Accelerator too, if that's correct. Yeah. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, so it was uh, over a year since we were working together. But obviously, I mean... 2019, maybe? Something yes, like that. It was, it was, was it second part of 2018? I think, yeah. Yeah, September intake. Perfect. Uh -huh. So what, what's been going on with you recently? <laughs> Let's catch up with you a little bit. You mean with, with, with work or...? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so obviously I have a, a private practice. So I set up my private practice in 2017, I think. Um, so my private practice is pretty much thriving. Yeah. Um, I've got a busy, especially at the moment, an online practice, but generally I go to a clinic um, and I have the project Grow With Your Flow, yes. uh, where okay. I did a retreat, as you know, and then I have done some workshops which have been really amazing and then I've since then developed that workshop into a more corporate offering oh yes brilliant yeah. um so so that's all up and up and running and um and grow with your flow is just you know evolving uh, as the name might suggest it's just in a, a sort of organic process really yeah. um so i don't exactly know where it's going to go but that that's actually feeling okay yeah um yeah. it's kind of growing alongside my practice and as i was saying to you earlier that it's also really helping to enrich my practice mm, mm. as well yeah. um so that's really lovely there's a sort of coming together Mm. of my clinical practice my therapy work and my grow with your flow more entrepreneurial um kind of bringing in other ideas from coaching and 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 from other ideas about all sorts of things really bringing yeah. that in and interestingly grow with your flow was originally set up for women oh right yes as, a, as an empowerment project for yeah women. Um, but now it's actually got some men on the site as well okay. and it seems to have attracted um, some men not a lot of men but some and that's really been an interesting development and it's made me wonder whether you know do I stick stick with uh, uh, with one area a niche mm. or do I or do I allow it to be yeah. more open and I've decided that I want to be very inclusive yeah yeah. So although a lot of my ideas are focused around empowerment for women, actually there's something around empowerment for men as well. And something about the balance between the two. You were always talking about that anyway. Oh, I remember us having so many conversations about, yeah, that yin and yang. And you and Becky in particular were, were kind of talking a lot about, well, I mean, everybody that cohort. Um, yeah, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of yin and yang going on. And it just felt wrong to just be too yin. Yeah, uh, of course. You know, <laughs> my belief is that there's a yin and yang within all of us. Yeah. Um, but it's really nice to have that kind of male influence, and I think uh, men benefit just as much from psychology and coaching and emotional um, development than than women do. So, so I'm really delighted that that the the project is beginning to evolve in the way that it is, and and to be really inclusive yeah more than exclusive and uh, you've also done some further training with regards to yes. leadership you were saying so so obviously when i first came to tppa i um had the the sort of main question in my mind so to speak was to develop the organizational psychology part of my work yeah. um but as we've had conversations before it never really plan it never panned out like that yeah yeah um, so actually what happened on the TPPA was that I became much more connected to um, myself, really would be the way to describe it. Not in a kind of therapy way, but more in a coaching sense, in a sense of what do, what are my passions, what do I love to do, um, and how, and starting from that. Mm. Almost like a bottom up. I mean, talk about grow with your flow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a bottom-up approach, which is, you know, when you're a psychologist, you often do courses and you learn about this model or that model or this or that or the other. But
But I found, I don't know whether it was partly because of the way you structured it or because of who I am, it, it was very much for me a very organic process yes. of reconnecting with my own interests, my own passions and how that could then inform mm. uh, how I developed within the TPPA and then uh, more in terms of that original question. So yeah. strangely, uh, I did more work really around um, connecting with myself, developing Grow With Your Flow and then after I finished TPPA, I then went on to do more of the leadership yes. uh, training, yeah. um, which sort of fit all together really, really nicely. So, you know, you never know, do you, how things are going to work out? No, and I think it was very um, courageous of you. And it was really in the kind of power of your, it was, it was about kind of um, maybe kind of, um, stepping into your power because I know I think one of the books that I sent to you um, in Practice Accelerator that time was um, was Tara Moore was playing big right so maybe <laughs> and I know that you really that was the first that. book that I read on <laughs> TPPA because everyone was talking about it and the reality being is that I'd I not I'd, I'd gone a little not how would I describe it I suppose I had two children I'd gone back into private practice but somehow that there was a certain lack of vitality mm. through the work that I was doing. It's almost like I'd got into a, a kind of a, a little bit of a, not a rut exactly, but I ended up doing the same sorts of things and there wasn't mm. really much happening. And I think uh, Playing Big was the first book that I read on the TPPA. And then that, that was just, you know... <laughs> amazing book and um and really really stimulating yes and you know that idea that you can you know really um branch out mm. and, um explore and uh you know do things that you wouldn't normally imagine you could do mm. and uh, and then i went on to like you know read lots of other but it was just really stimulating and of course big magic was another book that you recommended yes. Oh, which is also very kind of organic. <laughs> very organic. And Elizabeth Gilbert, I love as a writer yes. anyway. I think she's amazing. And um, I really loved that, that book. That was a real um, amazing book. There's been lots of books yeah. that I've read. <laughs> and, you know, and I just, I think it's, uh, it's not a course in the sense of a very traditional course. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, coming, you know, um, it, I came to TPPA having come back to work after having children and, you know, it's quite difficult when you've got small children to, mm. to you know, read a lot and, and, and refresh, you know, take on new ideas because you're so absorbed with them. So I think it was, it came at a really good time for me. Yeah. Um, and it was um, really stimulating and, um, you know, a lot of growth. There was a lot yeah. of growth in <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> so um, what would you say you love most about your private practice right now? Oh, that's such a good question. I really love the fact that I'm attracting men and I'm doing <laughs> with, with women. In practice. In uh, practice. Uh, that's nice just, generally. <laughs> hopefully it will continue to be more generally. Um, no, but... Uh, uh, I'm really enjoying doing some work with men and I am doing work with women as well. So it feels really nice and balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm actually doing quite a lot of adult work at the moment because I do actually normally do quite a lot of child work. Mm -hmm. So it's quite nice to be doing, you know, working with women uh, around their issues, but also working with men. It gives you a different perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really important work because we know that, you know, men are vulnerable too. Mm -hmm. um and uh you know men men need psychology as much as women do so i'm really excited about that and i think i'm also quite excited about bringing some of the ideas and some of my own personal growth to the work yeah so uh i can talk a bit more about that but yeah um perhaps the more spiritual aspect yeah yeah i love that you uh, integrate all those different philosophies yeah. as well so it's nice, a feeling of integration, um, oh, okay. finally, you know, between all the, the different trainings I've done. Mm. It feels like finally things are beginning to 
fit together rather than being separate yeah. parts yeah yeah so I have some experiences and philosophies around that that are kind of emerging as well, which is because oh, I've just started, uh, I've just brought on to, um, brought into the company a graduate who is social anthropologist. Oh. Often, to, mostly to work with my corporate practice, but um, but it's kind of interesting. The social anthropology of psychology private practice started to get me really interested because one of the things I've observed is that obviously as psychologists we're kind of taught in this we're taught to, to kind of remove ourselves from a process we're you know taught about you know you know to have boundaries which are which are all good things to do but what I find with the private practice on this topic of integration is that actually we're integrating much more of ourselves into Absolutely. our practice and and I think that and you know showing up on social media and demonstrating empathy um, often means that we are attracting people to the program who resonate with us somehow as people and yeah. so and that is often because of shared life experiences that we've had so we bring the expertise and we've also nevertheless as human beings had some of those experiences and so actually what I see is some of these silos or maybe ivory tower philosophies that have been ingrained within psychology as a practice have have actually started to break down a little bit yeah. and and I think that's really interesting and exciting because I think it allows space for some of those other philosophies and influences and you know and and so on so I can't wait to have more in-depth conversations and have Emily show up and kind of talk with us about what it means you know to be a psychologist in private practice here in different countries yeah. and so on and I think it's, um, you know, that idea of working with aligned clients, mm. um, you know, you don't, you don't really think about that, I don't think, in the same way. Well, I certainly didn't before I came on the course. And now I am attracting more aligned clients. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Mm. Um, and it makes the work so much more enjoyable. Yeah. Because yeah. of the quality and nature of the clients that you get are so much more aligned um, and so it, it's more fulfilling the work. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you're getting good quality referrals. You're not getting people that just you know don't really want to work or mm -hmm. or, or don't quite get get what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and therefore, you know, they don't make the same sort of progress. But I, I'm finding that my clients are so much more aligned, and it's it's a fascinating process. Mm. Uh, and one that's really for me really invigorating yeah it's it's like a feedback loop yes yeah um yeah. so it's, it's it's been amazing that that element and when you consider as well now this is a little bit of a philosophical discussion but when you consider that there's research out there that shows that the quality of the therapeutic relationship is actually more important than the technique the alliance, yeah. really why are we trying to create these artificial barriers within the relationship about I mean, I, I really understand about not transferring and not projecting ourselves onto our clients yeah, um, and having that kind of self-awareness, but at the same time, we are in relationship with them and there's a resonance there. <laughs> and I suppose, again, it goes back to that balance, you know, about the boundaries, um, yeah. you know, when you're in a therapeutic relationship, it is about helping that other person. But I think my experience of showing up more mm. in my work um, it, I, I feel that my work is more powerful. It's more transformative. Yes. For people, because people need someone to relate to. Yeah. You know, they want to feel like there's someone that understands something of what they're saying, even if you haven't had the direct experience, yeah. Yeah. but that you've been through transformational processes and that you, you know, you can offer something real yeah. um, and accessible. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me being able to bring those different parts of myself into yeah. the work has been you know really um, it's really transformed my practice yeah yeah and it gives it much more energy yeah. um, so I'm much more motivated it, it doesn't feel like so much of a, a drag yeah uh, whereas I think you can get into a bit of a rut with with pr private practice I hear that a lot you know sort of almost like a 
um, you know, factory line of people processing. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what would you say, if you look back, what were your highlights and maybe your lowlights and your challenges when you were going through Practice Accelerator? So I think the highlight, so for me, there's more than one. Uh, I think definitely being part of the group. Yeah. I mean, I felt, you know, really, I'm, not, I'm quite a sociable person. And I, like, I like people and I like to be around people. And I, I really enjoyed meeting the other ladies. So it's four of us, wasn't there, including, yeah. well, five, including you. But, um, you know, I felt like I made some really positive connections with other people doing similar sorts of things. And, and actually, you know, uh, I've made some really good friends um yeah. so that's been really exciting and really nice and supportive you know in the work that we do to have people that are similar and doing similar things um i think the practice i think the books you know some of the books and some of the resources mm. have been really um stimulating yeah and um i suppose being given some space and I don't exactly know how you did this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you did do this. It wasn't just <laughs> that you, providing space to almost be able to connect with what resonates for you, what really you're passionate about, mm. I think was was really one of the main transformative elements for me, mm. um, because I felt like I hadn't really been given that space before. Mm. and maybe that goes back to that those more traditional models of training um yeah. but um you know sorry my my friend's walking <laughs> the doorbell he's like walking <laughs> slightly distracting so i'm gonna do my best um yeah so uh i got the set you know got that that um experience of uh exploring for myself what what i really wanted to do and that that was um really powerful for me mm. Mm. um and you know i think we can just sort of get very busy in our lives doing what we think we should be doing yeah um but actually doing what we really want to do mm. that's that's another whole level for me yeah. yeah yeah um so i think the highlight was having that space to be able to explore what it was that i truly wanted to do and truly wanted to develop mm. um, and I think the retreat was another highlight. Oh yeah, we we were able to go to France. And that picture of us with all of the the, with food. the bottles of wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. oh, that was good. And um, really, really enjoyed that um, experience of of coming on retreat with you all. Yeah, because we went in winter, didn't we? It was. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, it was February, wasn't it? And we uh, yeah. did get a couple of nice days because we saw the Pyrenees, didn't we? So. We did. We went up on the hill, and it was like a really beautiful area. And I, I just thought it was really yeah. Lovely. We, did, um, we did some meditation up on the top of the hill, didn't we? With the wind and everything. Yeah, it was really magical, wasn't it? it was. Really magical with the four the four directions, and yeah, yeah, yeah. felt really quite quite special up there didn't it yeah, yeah i really enjoyed that and i enjoyed our coming together and actually meeting one another in the physical yeah. um that was really really nice so uh, i just enjoyed the whole course and um yeah. you know yeah. it was a really uh, <laughs> powerful process for me so yeah lovely the highlights low lights i don't think there were very many um I don't think I seem to remember many low lights, so that's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe something will occur to me, but I can't think of anything off the top yeah, of my head. Yeah, let me know. Yeah. Um, so what would you say, you probably touched on this a little bit anyway, but what would you say was your biggest learning point? Press accelerate asking question. What's my biggest learning point? I think there was two main big learning points for me. One is that I, I believe um that often as women we hold ourselves back mm -hmm. from um following our dreams and our callings and our passions um because i feel that we're often very conditioned to put other people first which you know in of itself is not a bad thing but i think it can be problematic when that's all we do and we sort of uh, place our 
desires and our wants and our needs uh, sort of on the back burner the whole time. Mm. So I think for me, um, a big learning point was to almost um, begin to prioritise what was important to me Mm -hmm. um, in all, you know, in terms of how I was developing as a person, but also in terms of my career. And, you know, and I believe that there's a, there's a kind of real uh, relationship between the two. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I think for me, there was something about that, um, which was really um, important. So, um, and another, so, so something about, yeah, just getting in touch with, um, what you, what you desire, what you want to do, and then feeling like you're able to do it and move forward. And I think that's where, you know, all the Tara Moy playing big, um, comes in. Um, so what else in terms of learning? I think for me, there was really, and I've, I've already said a little bit about that, but I think there was something just incredibly powerful about really reconnecting. Um, you know, cause we talked about that a lot in the groups, didn't we? You know, uh, well, I'm thinking of doing this. Is that, and we, we talked a lot about, is this really what you want to do? Mm. Is this what you want to do? Is this what you feel you should do? Yeah. And those two things are, you know, they can be quite different. Um, yeah, and so for me, that space, that time that to really connect with, with what is it that I am truly passionate about mm. was just, you know, when I think back, really pivotal moment for me yeah. or, yeah. you know, set of moments. Yeah. Mm. So if I just kind of reflect on, on what you said there and thinking about the groups that we have, I guess because we work together in small groups and yeah. over a long period of time. Yeah. People get to know you and I think the difference shows up you know even when we're just connecting online through zoom because we were using zoom before everyone else was using zoom yeah, <laughs> yeah. we were just doing that but there's there's obviously a difference when someone is in a group saying this is what, I, what I'm going to work on and you can see the difference between when that's an inspirational direction and when that's a I think I should be doing this direction. You can just yeah. see it. Now, yeah. if you're trying to do that on your own in the practice, there's no one there to reflect that back to you because first of all, there's no one else there. <laughs> 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 or, you know, <laughs> maybe there's one or two people, but usually, you know, we're on our own in private practice. Yeah. And, then, and then the other thing is because we get to know one another and because we're in that, that group together regularly, um, then other people get to hear and they hear the difference of when we're showing up authentically and when it's not really an authentic group for us. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's something about the space mm. um, that's, that's provided, you know, we talk about therapeutic spaces, but you know, we're talking about coaching space really okay. with TPA, but, um, and I'd not really ever had coaching before. Right. Yeah. Not really. yeah. So you know, Becky always says to me, you know, that I, um, I just sort of turned up at TPPA because I never really had a, I was never really um, planning to come on TPPA. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I basically got, I, I just thought to myself, I just got an email from you saying, oh, um, I've got a, a, a space tonight, you know, I'm going to run this, this course. And I was like, oh, oh, maybe I should <laughs> try that out. And then that's, do you remember, and we were speaking about me coming on the course. I was like, well, I haven't really planned for this. Um, but I think there was something about coming uh, to a, a space um, which, within which you could then explore, um, you know, the different um, aspects of yourself, but also, you know, what aspects of your practice that you truly wanted to develop and that's not a simple thing no I, from, from a personal perspective it's not something I could have done on my own I think it's very hard to do that on your own yeah I really do yeah. I really I really think that's you know almost impossible mm-hmm. um and I think sometimes we think we should be knowing but actually something very um very particular mm-hmm. about coming to a space like that Mm. Um, which has its own energy and its own its own magic you know yeah, yeah its own big magic <laughs> yeah big, its own big magic exactly that um, just provides a different type of space and helps you to think in a slightly different way 
that you wouldn't do uh, if you were just, you know, in your normal day, daily practice. Uh, and certainly in terms of independent practitioners as well, we can become quite isolated yeah. from other practitioners as well. So, you know, that plays into it also. But yeah, I really enjoyed that, that space um, provided yeah, yeah. Um, with, with the group. Yeah. So last question is, what would be one word of advice to fellow psychologists in private practice? What would you... Coming on to the TPP play or just in general? <laughs> just generally. <laughs> okay, just generally. Um, can you hear my uh, phone yeah, yeah. practicing the doorbell now? <laughs> um, it's working, which is great because I haven't had one for ages. Um, what advice would I give? Um, I think there's something really important and this probably relates to men as well. So, you know, um, but I think there's something about investing in ourselves. Mm. Yeah. That feels quite difficult at times, yeah. you know, and what I've learned from the TPPA, you know, and, and more generally, not just the TPPA, but the, the whole process is the importance of investing in ourselves. And I don't mean just necessarily just going on courses and learning more about different models and this, that, the other, like with the, the typical CPD. Mm. But I mean sometimes kind of branching out and maybe doing something a bit different yeah. that you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. Uh, and just think, you know, and, it, and following your intuition. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and not just thinking, I should be doing this I should be doing that but what do you actually want to do yeah yeah what do you feel passionate about mm. and I think a lot of people you know including myself often think what I should be doing mm. but actually what I want to do what I'm passionate about is another matter mm. and that's what I think uh, advice I give you know just follow your passion yeah yeah um and, and in a sense, bringing those two themes together, that's kind of giving ourselves permission to invest in our passion as well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes we think, oh, no, we, you know, we couldn't possibly do that. Um, I mean, even I sometimes do, you know, I, still, we, I think we naturally do it because I was wanting to incorporate some dance into some of my work. Mm. Sounds really out, out there. And I was thinking, oh, I need some music. And so I recently spoke to a friend of mine that I haven't seen for probably going on, goodness knows how many years, don't want to say. <laughs> and he's a musician and I connected with him back on Instagram and I said to him, you know, I'm looking to develop some music. And he's like, oh yeah, that sounds quite interesting. I was telling him what I was planning to do. He was like, oh, you know, I might be interested in doing something like that. Oh, brilliant. So you never know. You've got your own theme tune, Kat. <laughs> I want to hear it. Uh, I can't uh, anyway, yeah, so we'll see what comes out there. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, you never know. Like, I think before I would have gone, oh, no, I better not contact him. He won't be interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I think, well, you never know. Yes, it's, do true. It. it's true. Just do it and see what happens. Yeah. And if it doesn't happen, then that's fine. But, you know, you never know. And, and it's like just taking those more risks yeah yeah um that's like you know huge for me and that's that would be my advice take a risk yeah practice your risk <laughs> muscle a bit <laughs> so uh where can we find you online um yeah so, i should probably have all these uh <laughs> so i'm uh grow with your flow on facebook right yeah um and i think it's katherine underscore baverstock on instagram um, and I think that's about the presence of my social media currently. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't have a, a, a website for Grow With Your Flow yet, but, you know. It's, it's in progress. It's in the, it's in the uh, yeah, yeah. pipeline, so to speak. So, yeah. 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 Perfect. Thanks so much, Kat. It was oh, awesome yeah. catching up with you. And yeah, lovely, to, lovely to speak yeah. to you. Yeah. Okay. Take care, lovely. Take care. Bye. Bye.